Xi Jinping is the most powerful Chinese president in decades, and he has many faces. Tough guy Xi cracks down on corruption. Statesman Xi fights for free trade. Nationalist Xi reclaims land in the South China Sea. And visionary Xi aims to make China a great global power. Here's how a boy who was sent to the countryside to shovel sewage and feed pigs reached the pinnacle of power. Xi was born in Beijing in 1953. His father, Xi Zhongshun, was a communist revolutionary leader and China's propaganda chief, who rose to become a vice premier before being purged in Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution. At the age of 15, Xi too was affected by the Cultural Revolution. He was sent to a rural village in northwestern China where he lived in a cave house dug into a hillside. He was feeding pigs, you know, he was like cleaning, you know, kind of toilets. He was doing farming, you know, in his spare time, he would read books. That's Bloomberg senior government reporter Ting She. I cover China's politics and foreign relations. While living in the countryside, he became a voracious reader, picking up everything from Victor Hugo to Ernest Hemingway. He took one of his all-time favorite books with him. That is Karl Marx's magnum opus, Dust Capital. He read it three times over seven years. In 1975, Xi was allowed to return to Beijing, where he studied chemical engineering, but his work as a Communist Party member prevailed. Xi rose to the party ranks in the rapidly industrialized coastal provinces of Fujian and Zhejiang. His big break came in 2007 with his promotion to top leader of Shanghai. The job aided Xi's ascension to the party's all-powerful standing committee, setting him up to succeed Hu Jintao as party leader, commander-in-chief, and president. By 2013, the transformation was complete. Xi was China's paramount leader. There was nothing obvious in the early part of his career to suggest he would become one of China's most powerful leaders ever. Having taken power, Xi has demonstrated his flair for hands-on management and strict Communist Party discipline. He's launched a Mao-style campaign to tighten up controls on ideology, media, and dissent by arresting journalists and activists. And he has been overseeing probably the harshest crackdown on activism and human rights groups in the party's recent history. In addition, she has pledged a blizzard of economic reforms and ordered the biggest military overhaul since the 1950s. He has this great belief China totally deserves to restore its place in the world. Chinese dream is the phrase he coined to conveying this message. While she is seen as an able leader at home, he's only starting to establish China's new power on the world stage. And President Donald Trump has accused Xi of failing to curb the nuclear ambitions of North Korea. So far, he doesn't seem to be able to give up on North Korea because the fear about the collapse of North Korea and the consequences of that. But Xi is the first Chinese president not to visit North Korea and has argued China isn't responsible for them. And despite their disagreements over North Korea and trade, Xi and U.S. President Donald Trump hit it off. When he was in Mar-a-Lago on his first visit to the U.S., he seems to be totally in his element. He was telling Trump about the history of the Korean Peninsula, and Trump was rolling out his grandchildren to sing a Chinese song for Xi Jinping. Just how long their warm rapport will last remains to be seen. Back home, Xi will complete his consolidation of power with the Party Congress in Beijing in October 2017, when roughly half of China's top officials will be replaced. The questions now are will he use that power to force through reforms needed to revamp the economy, and will China emerge to rival the U.S. as the world's number one superpower?